welcome to another edition of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? This has been a year and two months already. I'm just so excited that you've been hanging in there with us. I hope you've been enjoying every, every one of the episodes. You can always go back to my website if you missed any and do a search. Um, in case you don't know me, I'm Karen E. Osborne. I'm the author of Getting It Right, which is a women's fiction suspense book, Tangled Lives, again, women's fiction, but this time it's a murder mystery, and Reckonings, which comes out on June 16th. Today, my guest is a fellow podcaster. She is the host. She just told me it's five years old. Can you imagine? She's the host of Every Soul Has a Story. I want you to welcome Dara Levan. Welcome, Dara. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really humbled and honored. Thank you. I'm just so it's very glad. weird to be on the other side, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it, woman. I guess so. <laughs> At least for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, she has a wonderful sense of humor and she's just a joy to be around. And I know you're going to enjoy this conversation. But I wanted to start by asking you about what's on your nightstand. What books are you reading or is on your Kindle or your tablet? What are you reading these days? And do any of them stand out to you as something you're really enjoying? Oh my gosh. So that's a great question. And actually, I just started Brene Brown. I have it next to me and it's so fitting. I love her. I love her. I feel like she is so honest. I know that's who she is and vulnerable and raw. She swears like a sailor. She doesn't apologize for it. This Atlas of the Heart, and no, this is not a paid advertisement, but I <laughs> I love evocative books. Um, I love fiction, nonfiction. Really, the only thing I don't personally care for is any, I like thrillers actually, but more psychological thrillers. I don't like anything with violence. I find that touches my energy field. I can't even separate. Same thing with visually on TV. So on my nightstand, oh my gosh, there are so many books. Most of them I would say are women's fiction. Mm -hmm. I love rom-coms. I love to laugh. Uh, I love love. And it's ironic because today is Valentine's Day and you look so gorgeous in your beautiful red shirt. So <laughs> I think it's really neat that we're recording and discussing this today. And so that's most of my books. Again, ironic that the Brene Brown book is called Atlas of the Heart. Another book that I love was Helen Huang's Heart Principle. Oh, if you haven't I don't read know it, that one. Gosh. Helen is such a fabulous human being to begin with. And she has autism, which really resonates for me in my former profession that I've never really left once I was a speech pathologist before I went back to writing full time. And she weaves characters that are in the autism spectrum. And much like Brene Brown, in the sense that I think the theme through the books, I never thought about this, Karen, so it's an interesting question you asked that's kind of percolating and uh, springboarding to another thought, mm -hmm. is most of the books I'm drawn to, it's not just about genre. For me, it's about humanity. It's about learning. It's about it's almost always character-driven, even since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm really, and I know, as you know, as an author, there's this character arc, blah, blah, blah. But Yes, although that occurs in all stories or it's supposed to, I think certain authors and certain stories really lend themselves to that. And when I really feel, same thing for music, I love musicals. I know when I've left a show and I cannot stop singing it, it got into my soul. So same thing, I can't say, oh, I only read women's fiction. To me, just like a human being, it's not about color, race, religion, sexual orientation, it's about the person a book for me is, is like a person. So if it grabs me by the heart, I'm all in. And that's kind of how I live in general. So. Yes, yes. So you mentioned a couple of things in that answer that I just want to follow up on. Um, one of the things you said was that you were a speech pathologist. And I would love to hear about how that affects your writing. How does that affect um, you know, the things you're pursuing now. Mm, that's, thank you for asking that. Um, 
Great question. It affects it in ways in which I could never have predicted. So first of all, I just completed my first novel. I'm querying it right now and my heart and mind are completely open to how, however it's birthed in this world. I'm not just stuck in one way. I do know it's an important story. And part of the story, my protagonist has a speech disorder or we could call it a challenge. And I decided as she wrote herself, I, it's wild. You know, a lot of our author friends often say, oh, I heard this character in my head. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you have some kind of psychosis. Like we really have to get this checked out. P.S. That happened to me. I never thought I'd write fiction. Everything I speak, I write, I think, I feel. I used to be a reporter. I was a journalist. It's always been truth. And I woke up literally January 1st, I guess, 2021. And it just fell out of my mouth. I have to start my novel. And I went, like, I, you ever surprised? I was shocked. Even the word novel. I'm like, what? Who is this? And I just sat down and it poured out of my heart, my hands from my fingertips. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and, and there it was. And so she taught me as I started going through this, I said, you know what? Going forward, any other novels, now it's gotten plural, Karen. I mean, it went from weird to weirdo. It's like, who is this? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, I'm just going with it. We'll always have some sort of representation of a character or characters with a speech and or language challenge and possibly emotional as well, because those are all my specialties. I worked a lot with kids with autism, pragmatic challenges, pragmatic meaning social skills. I've also personally edited five books on ADHD and social skills for a psychologist years ago. Um, so that seems to all be circling back and it is thread throughout my novel very subtly, but it's, it's not so subtle, you, you know, and you know that it's related to emotional trauma of this protagonist and it's her journey of healing. And as the novel and the story progresses, you start to see how her speech changes a bit too. Yeah. Can you tell me also that, um, so the name of Dara's uh, podcast is Every Soul Has a Story. And you can see that that's a perfect title for her. Uh, and so what are the things, how did the speech therapist um, deal with starting a podcast? Was there any influence there? It's interesting you ask. So my podcast is actually two years old this week. So this is so timely that you had asked me to be your guest. And thank you. This is just, I'm really, I'm really honored. Every Soul Has a Story actually began as almost, I don't want to say a dare, but I had so many friends from back in my day. I went to Indiana University. I was an English and journalism double major. And some of my friends who knew me as Dara, the writer, which I was my whole life, it turns out speech therapy was almost a detour from my true path and purpose. So fast forward for years, my friends were saying, you should start a blog. I said, I don't do that. That feels so naked. It feels so weird. If it's not in print, it, it just feels strange to me to hit send. And then there's like your words and your feelings are in cyberspace. So in 2016, I met this web guy that a friend referred me, 15 years my junior, and he said, read me something. I read him something that I personally thought was lousy, and he starts to cry. I'm <laughs> teary thinking about this. And he says to me, you have a gift, and you need to share this with the world. And I said, you just want my business. Because I, I don't do well with compliments, truly. Anyone that knows me, I'd much but rather do. he was do. crying, Dara. He was crying. <laughs> I know, but maybe he was cutting onions. I don't know. I was like, I was so flabbergasted. And I didn't, I'd never met him. This was not when we had Zoom. It, and I, he said, listen, let me challenge you to something. Will you just let me design a website with you? And will you write once a week for a year? I said, I don't ever say no to a challenge. I said, Okay. And then he said the B word, the blog word. I said, no, I don't do the blog thing. You know? <laughs> so I made him a promise and I don't ever bail on my promises. I'm, I am loyal and whether it's friends, family, my profession, I am a woman of my word. And so I, I said, okay. So then I of course started to obsessively research names and soul kept coming to me over and over. And I ended up trademarking every soul has a story, not knowing I'd be, here with you today, not knowing this would be going on for nearly five years that I've been publishing weekly, 
August is five years. And, you know, I said, okay. So I didn't put my face on there. Humility is extremely important to me. And I'm very concerned with what I, a lot of what I see in recent years, especially in social media, just what I personally feel is a lot of self-absorption bordering on narcissism. And so I wouldn't show my face. I, I wouldn't use my name. I didn't change it to my website that is now darylevan.com until two years ago. And I got bolder and braver as I went forward, dipping my toe into the water. And every I would speak the blogs also because the whole intention of every soul has a story was and continues to be about every soul. It's not about Dara. And that's fine if it was. And I know a lot of my colleagues and friends, that's how, what I guess is called a platform now. But for me, it was really just a way of connecting souls globally. And so- So what kind I of want, people do you interview? What kinds of- regarding, the, Well, before I was interviewing example. people verbally, uh, so I was writing about them. And now it became a podcast and answer to your question. I'm circling back to, I'm sorry, kind of went all over, but it, it all comes together. Um, the podcast was birthed out of, really out of the pandemic. I really felt people were lonely and needed a way to connect. And so the podcast, I had no idea what I was doing. I just said, eh. and it's just kind of growing and growing. I've interviewed people, cancer survivors, artists, uh, and they're all, some are national, international, several authors, a jewelry maker, um, a couple that is a really, they're actually a huge benefactor here in South Florida. They, I don't think they've ever given anyone an interview and they're so beautiful. They, I mean, they don't know from podcasts. And I was, so I'm so grateful because I see myself, again, it's not about me. I see myself more as a vessel through which hopefully people's stories can be shared. And it's not about the book or the artistry or the, certainly that's part of the person. As you know, our books and our, our craft is so part of who we are, but rather it's the extraordinary and the ordinary. It's the who behind the what. It's really my tagline is real talk in real time. So I don't script it. It's just, I don't know what's going to happen. And just, so I go with it. How do you find people? They've been finding me. Um, much like I feel like friendships find each other and two souls connect when they're supposed to. In the beginning, it was people that I knew, again, through, I do a lot of community work, which I don't talk much about in my writing world. But some of the people in the beginning were kind of people I know from our arts community here in South Florida and Broward County. And I was really grateful that they, they agreed. You know, it's, I have another person, I don't want to say who, but one of the people I interviewed, this person had been asked apparently to share the story and didn't until I asked her. And she said, for some reason, I feel comfortable with you. And I, can I, see saying, that. I can see how easy it is for people to just open their their hearts to you and just um, and just talk to you. Uh, getting back to and kind of wrapping up with your uh, work in progress. So you said you finished it, and it's ready to go out in the query world. Is it ready to go to publishers to agents? All of the above. I am welcoming. I've been sending it out to a few agents. I've gotten a few rejections, which is awesome because I was telling my husband, I said, honey, I am on the way to becoming a published author. It's official. I got some rejections. And he looks at me like I'm crazy. I said, no, I'm serious. This is so exciting. You Listen, can't be an author if you don't have rejections. No. And I'm a big believer in silver linings. <laughs> and my book is also, my book is life affirming. It's a story of trauma to triumph. And it's a woman's journey who really realizes who she is and what her past was. After discovering a family secret, she begins to realize that the life she thought she knew was nothing of what it really is. So it's yeah. an awakening of sorts and definitely a journey of healing. That sounds wonderful. That sounds awesome. I can't wait for, tell me the, do you have a working title? I have a definite title that hopefully stays depending on where this book baby is birthed, but I'm not sharing it yet. It's kind of keeping it close to my heart. Okay. I hope you understand. <laughs> we will just, we will look, we will keep our eye out for Dara Levan uh, for her book. We will absolutely go and listen to her amazing, amazing podcast, Every Soul 
has a story. And if people want to find you and find out more about you, how do they do that? Oh, thank you. You can visit my online home, which is daralevan.com. I'm also quite engaged and interactive on Instagram because I love photography and I love connecting with readers there. That's Dara Levan Writer, W-R-I-T-E-R, and same thing on Facebook. So Excellent. So I hope you will check out Dara. We thank you so much for coming and, and being with us again today. Whatever platform you're watching this on, so if you're watching it on YouTube, or if you're watching it on Facebook, if you're watching it on my website, I do ask that you take a moment and just subscribe. That would be so helpful. We thank you for being with us and we'll see you next time. And what are you reading? What are you writing? <laughs>